Tomorrow is Mother's Day. Yes. And so I have a Mother's Day message for the rescue mission. <laughs> now there stood by the cross of Jesus the mother, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the mother of Cleophas, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto her, his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to his disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing all, that, all, all things that were accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And there was set a vessel of full of vinegar, and they filled it the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Lord, we just come before you and praise you and thank you for this 445. Lord, we desperately need you today to be able to come. Lord, fall upon this service in a way that only you can. Holy Spirit of God, flow up and down the pews of this chapel in a way that only you can. We ask you, Lord, that you would move marvelously and magnificently here today. Have your free will here today, Lord. Help us, Lord God, in the areas of our life that need help. And Lord God, move mightily and bountifully. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, gentlemen. Mary, the mother, earthly mother of Jesus, is standing at the cross along with a few other women and a disciple, John, whom Jesus asked to take his mother in, knowing that he was going to die. And so she is there before the cross, and she's seeing the son that came into the world about ready to die. And I can't imagine the emotion that is going through her heart and is going through her soul as she sees Jesus on the cross about ready to die. And I look at her and I look at her heart and a mother's heart toward her children. And I, for the purposes of this sermon, I know that some people have had bad mothers. I know some people have had mothers that are in prison, have, have had mothers that deserted them, have had mothers that uh, were full of drugs, full of mothers that never took care of. I, I know all that. But for today, for this sermon, and we could preach on a million other sermons on all those other topics, I, I want to key on a mother that genuinely cares for her kids. She may struggle, she may have difficulty, and she may be going through a whole lot of stuff. But I'm talking about a mom who genuinely loves their kids, even though she may herself be going through a lot of things. So that's, I'm qualifying what I'm preaching today because I know that the realm of motherhood uh, in this place and everywhere I go, is it's all over the map, and, and I know that. And, and I'm sorry if you did have a mother that loved you or cared for you. I really do. And uh, but for the purposes of this sermon, this is a mom that genuinely loved her son, and she was brought to a point where God wanted to use her and God wanted to not only use her but because she was humble and because she was young and because she was caring and she was a woman of hospitality. Hospitality. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1 when Mary first found out that she was pregnant with Jesus Mary responded and she said how Oh, how I praise the Lord. How I rejoice in God, my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl. And now generation after generation forever shall call me blessed of God. For he, the mighty one, 
the Holy One, has done a great thing to me. His mercy goes on from generation to generation to all those who reverence him. How powerful is his mighty arm, how he scatters the proud and haughty ones. He has torn princesses from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has satisfied the hungry hearts and set the rich away with empty hands. And how he has helped his servant Israel. He has not forgotten his promise to be merciful, for he has promised our fathers to be merciful. Abraham and his children to be merciful to them forever. Her song, Mary's song, when she first found out that she was going to conceive and have a baby, was that of a great joy, was a great happiness. And there was a time in this country when that was a great joy. In, in fact, I, I read a statistic the other day that uh, Americans place great personal value on raising children. Most adults, whether they are parents or not, believe that watching children grow up is life's greatest joy. 78% were men, 83% were women, and this is from 1994, and I'm sure that's gone up. And so there was this great joy attached to having children, being a mother, being a father, and seeing your children grow. But we also know that in this day and age that uh, approximately 1.21 million uh, abortions in America take place every year. It's been declining. But we know that in the heart of a mother, God has placed the sense of wanting to have children, to care for the children, and, um, and many times putting the needs of the children above their own. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen women in the hospital ready to die, or when I used to do nursing home ministry, Bob probably can remember those times, where you see women at the point of death, they're about ready to die, they don't know where they're gonna spend eternity and the things that are on their mind is, I hope my daughter's okay. I hope my son's doing all right. I hope so-and-so is all right. And I look at them with this face when I was in those ministries, and I still do when I do hospital visits, and I see that these people are ready to walk off to eternity, and they want to know about their kids. They want to know, how are the kids doing? How are things with the kids? And I read in our passage today how Mary was about to see her own son, earthly-wise, die at a cross. And I was reading uh, on WebMD where many doctors think that today that the baby boomer parents are out going to out lifetime their own kids because of obesity, because of, you know, the fact that they're not doing anything, you know, outside physical, they're inside all the time, that because of obesity, the, the parents might outlive their kids. Uh, what a sad commentary. But we know that uh, Psalm 127, 3 through 5 says, children are a heritage for the Lord, offspring a reward from him, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they are content with their opponents in court. Exodus 20 and 12, words familiar to us here. Honor thy father and my mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God has given thee. It's a blessing to have children. It's a blessing to be a mother. But the burden that comes with that mother and dealing with raising children is a tremendous burden. It's a tremendous sacrifice. And I was telling a young lady the other day, I said, you have no idea how selfish you are until you have kids. And you start wondering, you start realizing that you have to sacrifice in order for these kids to grow. And I was writing in a blog and I said, 
I said, you know, it, it's nice to honor your mother, but I said, you'll never realize all the sacrifices she did for you until you have your own kids. And, and you look back and you see all the sacrifices your mom and your dad made for you, and, and you don't realize those things until you get to be a parent yourself. And, and here's Mary, and she's at the foot of the cross, and she's seeing Jesus die. And I can't imagine the emotional trauma. I can't imagine what's going through her heart. I was at the cemetery last week, uh, and I was visiting uh, my former wife's grave, and next to hers was a fresh tombstone. A mother and father were weeping outside this tombstone, and they had an 11-year-old son that just passed away. And on the side of the tombstone, it said, Oh, Jesus, I have just released from my loving arms into your loving arms one whom's, who means so much to me. I know this dear one means even more to you. I thank you all for the blessings you gave this loved one of mine. I am so grateful for how you blessed my life and the lives of so many others by this dear one. Now bring comfort to me and to all those who grieve. Bless me until that day when we are reunited with you in eternity. Amen. This is a, on an actual tombstone. I, I took a picture of it and copied it. A mother's crying the loss of her son that she, I don't know how the child died, but she's mourning the loss. And she's hurting inside because there's a connection that mothers make with their children, and that connection is made in the womb even, experts say. And even in the womb, they, there's a, 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 they can sing to that child and, and connect with that child even inside. But that baby grows up, and that baby, baby becomes a man or a woman in society. But that mother never stops worrying about that child. And when my boys turned 18. I said, they're 18. And then a dear elderly woman friend of mine said, Mike, you're, you're always going to be concerned about them all their lives. And she was right. You never lose perspective of your kids. And when you're a mother, you never lose perspective of that either. You're always concerned about what's going on with your kids until the day you're taken home or until the day they pass before you. But she saw the joy that she had in her heart. She knew that Jesus was going to be is the Son of God. She knew that he was the very creator of the world. And she knew that she was given the very awesome privilege of being the mother of bringing him into the world. And she saw the joy that he brought her when growing up. But Mary also saw the heartache when he became into ministry. When he came into ministry, she had other brothers and sisters, James being one of them, and they didn't really get along at first. James especially obviously got saved and he wrote one of the, one of the epistles, but, but he had other brothers and sisters that weren't particularly fond of him. He enters ministry and and the whole worlds are flocking around him and his mom's so excited because she sees that his son is now has recognition and everybody loves him, but she also sees how the experts are always trying to trick him, how the experts are always trying to fool him, how they're always trying to draw him into a corner, how they're always trying to get him to lie and try to get him to somehow make ill of what he had said or what he had written in the word of God. They saw the, the hungry come to him as she said in her own prayer and he fed them but she also saw the people that only came to him because they wanted something. She saw the people that came to him because all they wanted was some, a free show. They wanted to see what they could get from him. They weren't looking for a personal relationship with them. They were just looking to see what they could get. And then she had to deal with 
all of those that he came in contact with that needed healing. They were desperate. They had problems. And he healed every single one, the Bible says. And wherever he went, that's what he did. And she saw in her own son a love that he had for people that no one else had. She, she saw that in Jesus there was something special about, very special about this boy. There was something very special in this son. There was something very special because she believed all along that he was the son of God. And she never made it a mistake to put herself equal with him. She always knew that he was the son of God. And she would have never in her wildest dreams considered to be co-redemptor with him. But Jesus grew, and she saw the crowds, and she saw him get tired, she saw him get weary, and she saw the, 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 the emotional trauma that, and the weariness of the traveling, uh, and of what it was like to be who he was, and to be so popular. And I'm sure she spent plenty of night praying for her kids. And I'm sure she spent plenty of night praying Lord, just help Jesus right now. Help him wherever he's at, wherever he's preaching, wherever he's going. He was 100% God, yes. But don't forget, you know, that for a minute, he wasn't 100% man also. He dealt with everything the Bible says as you would. And he dealt with all the hardships that you and I did. And the Bible says that he knows every single one. But here she is at the foot of the cross and she's about to see him after being flogged and after being bleeding to death and whipped, nailed to a cross and in excruciating pain and anger that the Romans wouldn't even do it to their own citizens because it was so harmful. And here she's seen him on the cross and she can't imagine, she can't imagine the pain that he's suffering, but she can identify with it all. And she's there, and she sees all of what had happened. She saw the kangaroo courts that he went through, and, 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 and everything that happened. And I'm sure she was praying, oh God, just let him loose. Oh, just let him loose from these cords. Just let him be. But she didn't like the rest of the disciples understand that Jesus had to die for such a time as this. She didn't see that he had to go to the cross. But she's at the cross and she knows that she rejoices because she had him for the time that she had him. And I know mothers in my life that had miscarriages and every year they come to that day where that miscarriage came and the mothers remember that they had that miscarriage even though that child is no longer with them. I, I've seen women that have had children that, have, that were born artistic, that, that were born with Down syndrome, born with different diseases or whatever you want to call them. And, and those women seem to love their kids more than other women for some reason. And those children are always a blessing. They're always a blessing. I, every time I hear a... Uh, an expert talk about somebody that has whatever it is that they have, muscular dystrophy or what, MS, there's always the experts saying, these kids are more innocent, they're more of a blessing, they're honest with you, they're blunt. And I see the mothers at the malls and I see how they're carting their kids around in the wheelchairs and, and all the extra effort they got to make in order to try getting that child into the, into the car and they weigh a lot sometimes. But here the mothers with a smile on their face are just putting the child in and taking off. And here are the mothers. Here are the mothers. 2 Timothy 3 and 2 says, Children, will be disobedient in the last days to their parents. They won't respect their parents. They won't honor their parents. And you see that these days. You see that this, we're coming to a time in life when being a mother is something that some experts would say are bad. 
that you can't live your dream, you can't do what you want to do because you're tied down, because you got a kid. But may I remind you, the Lord says that children are a blessing. The Lord says children are a blessing. And I can't tell you how many mothers that are in this, that represent you in this room, sacrificed and did all they could to give a roof over your head, sacrificed and did all they could so you had food, did all they could to make sure you had something. And, and I know women that work two and three jobs. I know women that will do anything for their kids yeah. just so they have some place to stay, just so they can have some food. You know, we, we have a lot to be thankful for. And we have this mother here who was a godly mother. And I know that every time when I'm preparing a sermon for this place, I know you have godly parents. I know you have a godly mom or a godly grandma because the Lord is always bombarding my head with thoughts and bombarding me with what to preach about and that's stuff that I would never normally preach about in my own life. But I know that there's some mother that's bombarding God with prayer saying, please save my son, please save my son, please save him at the rescue mission. I just, I know it. And so, I think it's a great honor. But I remember a, a Southern Gospel song that uh, I used to sing all the time, don't sing it much anymore. It was called When Mama Prayed. And I don't remember the group that sang it. I don't know if it was the cathedrals, I don't remember. But it said, When Mama Prayed, Heaven Stood Attention. All Heaven rejoiced to hear what she had to say. And Satan knew that he was defeated when he heard my good old mama's prayers. He knew he was defeated. And there are moms in this room right now that are crying out in the 445 because they want to see their son become something of their life. There's no mom that I know of that would like to see something less than their son than good. I know that every mom that's worth their weight, and I, I again, I, I preface it by saying, uh, a mother that really, truly loves, that mother wants the best for their son, and it don't matter how old you are. They want to see you make something of your life. They want to see you become something. And yes, they do, if they're godly parents, they do want to see you get saved. They do want to see you give your life to the Lord. And, and they're hurting right now because they may not show it to you openly or outwardly, but many I bet are hurting because they see the condition of their family and they can see that the unit's not together as one, but it's been broken up. And I'm sure they're praying for it to become back to one. But one of the greatest things, gentlemen, I would say this, I would say the greatest thing you could do for Mother's Day is to make a decision today that I want to follow Christ. I, I want to give up my, my own life and doing things my own way, and I want to live for Jesus. Amen? Amen. That, I don't know a mother that would, would, wouldn't want that. Because even when I gave my life to the Lord, at the time my parents were unsaved, they saw the change in my life, and they said, you know, at the time, before they got saved themselves, they said, well, hey, you know, this religion thing is working for Mike, hallelujah. I, I'm glad he's turning his life around. But you see, a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ will do that. And, and, and Mary stood at the, at the bottom of the cross and she weeped because she saw the terrible things that were happening to Jesus, her earthly son. As she saw the things that were going on, she saw everything that happened in his life. But she came to the realization after she saw that he had risen, that he had come, and that he would be the sin barrier for all of mankind. That he came for a purpose and a plan. He just didn't come for no reason at all, but he came to die for sinners. And that, that must have helped her. That must have brought a purpose and a sense to her life to know that the Jesus that she knew, the Jesus that was so prevalent in her life, that this is why he came. 
She said in her own prayer at the very beginning in, in Mary's song, she said, generation after generation is going to be blessed. And, and so she knew that he was the son of God. And all generation after generation is blessed that come to know Jesus. And, and every generation that bows the knee to him and says, I am going to receive the free gift of salvation. I am going to repent of my own life. I'm going to receive him now into my heart. And that did her heart good. Because this mother's heart was breaking at the cross, breaking for the fact that he was dying, but she was so elated, she was so excited, she was so happy when she knew this same Jesus died for a cause, died for a purpose, and made something of his life and, was, and went, to the, went to death doing good. And that he died for all of mankind. And regardless of why you believe or don't believe that he went to the cross, the Bible is very clear that he went with a love for you and I. The Bible says that. He endured the cross, despised and shame, and is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. That's what the Bible says. That he died for a purpose. He so loved you and I. He loved so you and I that he went to the cross. Didn't take any type of, or, or form of, uh, of serving. You know, if all these generations of people will love me and worship me and, and get saved, I'm going to go to the cross. No, he went to the cross anyway. And, and he made it possible for anyone... And, and, and you and I are anyone who would call upon the name of the name of the Lord can be saved. He made that possible. He made it possible. And he knows the struggles of a single parent mom. He knows the struggles of a married mom. He, he knows what it's like to have rebellious kids. And he knows what it's like for a godly mom to try to raise a family and try to instill Jesus into them. And, and, and having the brothers and sisters, the siblings, and, and everybody coming against her and cussing the name of the Lord. Jesus knows what that's like. Jesus knows what it's like to have a mom that can't sleep in the middle of the night because her kids are out watering, doing this, that, and the other. She has no idea what they're doing, has no idea when they're coming home. That mother grieves for that kids. And she can and she's unable to sleep sometimes. But a mother's heart for her children has not changed since Mary was at the foot of the cross. It's still the same today. And there are mothers that are so wanting their child to know Jesus, to change their life from the old to the new. And there are mothers who their prayer is that this preacher would come here today at the 445 and, and preach this very message uh, of repentance and, and preach the cross. Because as Mary's heart broke over Jesus dying on the cross, there are many mothers that are represented in this room that go to bed crying over the, the state of their kids. And, and even you guys, and, and you can be my age, if not older. If your mom's still alive, she still could be wanting you to receive Christ, wanting to know him. They, they, they just, that, hey, we don't, we don't know how, how moms operate, how they tick. We're guys. They're, all, they're in a whole different realm, guys. Don't, don't think you can figure a mom out. By the, time I figured, by the time I figured out I knew more than my mom, I figured out I didn't know it. My mom always knew more than I did and still does. And the Bible says that you would still honor your mother and father today. There's no time limit on the, on the verse in Exodus 20, 12. It didn't say until honor your mother or father until you're 18. You honor your father or mother until the day you, the Lord takes you home or takes them home. 
And, and sometimes they ask you to do crazy things. Sometimes they'll ask you something you have no idea. But you know what? God will bless you if you honor them. Because they're your parents. No matter how old you are. And, and by the way, this has nothing to do with the sermon. But my grandma, I remember my grandma being in her 70s. And we were like 12 and 11 or something like that. She was a short little Polish lady. And a Polish, so I can say that. Short little lady like this, and she could whip me and my brothers. Must be leverage. So you honored her. But gentlemen, as I close today, we don't know what a mother goes through. We don't know a mother's heart. But we do know what the Bible says about a mother's heart. And we know what Jesus says. And Jesus knows the mother's heart perfect. And we know how he honored his earthly mom. And he told John to take care of her. And don't get the, the verses all mixed up. And uh, it says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciples standing there, whom he loved, he says, Unto his mother, woman, thy, behold thy son. He's talking about John taking care of, John taking care of, of, of Mary. And so, Mother's Day is tomorrow. If you can do anything that's good, visit your mom, tell her what you love her. Hear her out if you can. But come to her and say, today at the 445, I made a decision for Christ. Sincerely, honestly, not just uh, lip service. But say, Mom, I know you've been praying for me. I know you sent this crazy preacher here yesterday to preach a message on this whole thing, and I want to be saved. And uh, I made that commitment. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the message you gave me. I thank you, Lord. This is not one that I would normally preach. It's not even one that would have come to mind, but it's one that you gave, Lord. And I praise you, Lord God, because I know it's from you and it wasn't for me. And Lord, Mother's Day is tomorrow, Lord, and I ask you right now, Lord, Holy Spirit of God, sweep down the pews of this church. Touch these men right here, right now, Lord. Lord, I, I pray for a conviction. I pray they come to know you as Lord and Savior. I pray they'll come up to the front and, and pray with me to receive Jesus. I pray if there's anyone else that has any other needs that they will do the same. 